Welcome to the art project. Um, we're going to make some homemade ink. In this time of uh, quarantine, when we are stuck at home and maybe we don't have any art supplies or we have run out of art supplies, we're going to go old school. We're going to take it back to colonial days. Colonial days? Maybe earlier than that. I don't know. But we're going to go way back. We're going to do it the way they used to do it, I think. So first thing I did was I went out um, and picked some wild... Well, these aren't really wildflowers. I went out and picked some flowers. You can go out and pick out anything. You can use leaves. Um, but I chose some flowers. I got a colorful red one, a uh, bunch of colorful yellow ones, and these purple ones. Got some white vinegar. Poured just about a teaspoon into it. You see I don't have a whole lot of water. And a dash of salt and then I stirred the flower petals around in the water I'm doing this all out of order so just kind of try and keep up um, the red flower was pretty large so I sliced it up into smaller pieces kind of like you would lettuce threw it in the pot um, put it on the stove and boiled it for about well I was gonna boil it for an hour but it turned out that about 30 minutes or less is sufficient. So I set it for an hour, but in the end, I really only did about 30, 35 minutes maybe on the red. While that was boiling, I also made some coffee, uh, just the same way you would make coffee if you were going to drink it. Uh, I have a kettle and a French press, which I think makes a really good, strong coffee. So um, take just some ground coffee, put it in the uh, French press, pour the boiling water over it, and then let it sit for about four minutes. While that was going on, I made some little labels with the names of the flowers and uh, the name of the coffee and all that on there so that I could dip it and I could see what it looks like in like 15 minute increments, 30 minute increments, and so on. Um, I poured myself a cup of coffee. And then what was left in the coffee uh, thing, this is what was, like, so I poured a cup of coffee for myself, and then what was left in the uh, French press, um, I poured into a coffee filter and into a, a funnel and into a jar. So I filtered all of this just to make sure there were no grounds in it, and later on, so that you'll see, so that there's no flower petals in it. I used a spoon to kind of press it and get all the excess uh, ink, actually excess water now going to be ink, out of the uh, filter. Just kind of smushed it out. Be careful not to split the bag or the coffee filter. And then I dipped this too just to see what it would look like. It really doesn't look very dark at first, but as this dry, I think it oxidizes and becomes a lot darker. Uh, this is the amaryllis, the red flower that I cut up, and I poured it through the funnel. And then while I was letting, while I was working with the red, I started the yellow flowers up. Each one of these takes about thirty minutes, so this is kind of time consuming. Look how awesome this red looks! It looks great coming out of the um, tea bag, but I mean out of the filter. But it's not. As I don't think it's as good once it's been painted with this on the other hand looks fantastic watch I'm gonna dip it in here and when I show it to you uh, it's a great color be sure that uh, when you pour everything into the filter you really get everything out of the saucepan so I'm scraping all of the petals in there because I want to squish the liquid out of the petals Look how great this yellow looks on the coffee filter. Amazing. And now introducing Alana. So hey everybody, I'm going to um, paint with homemade ink. Um, so right now I'm going, we have four different kinds made from flowers. 
So first we're going to use this one. It's red. Don't know what kind of flower it is. So we're going to try to make a heart. She wanted to do a heart and, and all kinds of other things. Now, one of the things that I learned from this is that the color that you put down is not the color you're going to have tomorrow. So as you look at this painting that she's doing, uh, it looks pretty watered down, but it, it, it will be darker tomorrow. So, and I'll show you what I mean in just a minute on mine. So the first thing I did was lay out a face. You can draw, paint, whatever you want to. And I'm doing this on watercolor paper, which is really nice, but you can do this on any kind of paper. You're gonna get slightly different results. Uh, but don't be afraid to do this and try it on you know, anything. Try it on an old envelope. Try it on computer paper, printer paper, a paper towel. Paint on a coffee filter if you want to. An old t-shirt, preferably white, because it won't really show up on black too well. Um, I just filled this in. Uh, using all the different colors this is the this is Coreopsis is the name of the flower my wife had to tell me these things uh, Coreopsis and it made a it made the darkest and brightest color of all of them I did the hair with the coffee first and now I'm starting on the Coreopsis why I'm choosing what colors for d different parts, I don't know. I'm just trying everything out. I thought brown hair, brown coffee. Um, but I didn't have any like skin tone, so I just like jumped in here with the Coreopsis ink. Now, keep watching, because when I get done with this, with all of the painting part, I'm just going to let it sit overnight. And when I come back the next day, uh, it is going to be darker and almost unbelievable. This is the amaryllis ink. I poured everything into these little bitty uh, bottles that I had. These little bitty airtight containers. Now, this is the amaryllis. And I chose it because it's red. And Okay, I'm doing red lips, right? But it didn't show up. Like, I thought, hey... Uh, the amaryllis does not work but when I come back tomorrow and look at it it was a lot darker I'm not really sure what color it is I don't know if it's red or not you tell me down in the comments below I'm kinda of colorblind I'm red green colorblind so I don't do things because of their colors I mean I, I do I, I use color because well colors pretty and everybody likes it but I don't choose colors based on what colors they are I just grab them and use them most of the time especially on something like this when there's not a label on the container telling me exactly what it is and it's homemade and all that kind of stuff eventually I decided it needed some texture so I got my paintbrush and just started splattering it I kept adding a little bit more uh, to the places that I wanted to to be the amaryllis thinking it would get darker and it does look a little bit darker right there but it looks a lot better uh, the next day I went back and put another layer on some of the coffee just to kind of give it some more um, layers of hair so to speak and some more darkness but the coffee uh, also didn't uh, seem to be very dark. You can make it darker. I've got some other videos where I used coffee to paint with. Uh, I'll try and leave a link in the description down below, or you can just search my channel for coffee and probably find it. I did, I did one that looks a lot better. I mean, the coffee was a lot better than this one. So Then I decided to do the background with the amaryllis. And then I realized that the amaryllis just wasn't as um, bright as I wanted it to be. So then I started using the uh, Coreopsis again. So the flowers that I used were Coreopsis, Russian Sage, Amaryllis. Those were kind of the best ones I had in my yard. And I didn't want to... Um, there were some 
flowers that I had in the yard that I didn't want to pick because my wife would have killed me. So don't go around picking other people's flowers without asking them. But making your own ink was kind of fun. Making my own ink was kind of fun. And and it works. You know, like I'm getting artwork made that I can turn in for my AP Pro, AP portfolio. And by the way, this is probably not my best piece ever. So I, I kind of did it quick to see what the ink would do. This is the next day. Look how much darker the colors got. Incredibly darker. Then I just grabbed a regular ballpoint pen. Now here is um, kind of the crux of the matter. I didn't like the picture, you know, just ink. And I don't think that many pe people would. Uh, but I also wanted to continue this video using stuff that you have laying around your house. And it is not hard to find a regular ballpoint pen. I mean, this is just as cheap a ballpoint pen as they get. You can pick these up at um, the Dollar General. Uh, you could probably go to your next door. If you don't have a pen at your house, you can probably go to your next door neighbor and say, I need to borrow a ballpoint pen. I need to borrow something to write with. Somebody next to you, somebody close by. These pens are everywhere. So, and they're cheap. So I decided to fill in, you know, more of it and give it some more uh, value with the black ballpoint pen and I just kept building it up and building it up and building it up. There are other videos on my channel about uh, hatching and cross hatching. Uh, you can look those up if you want to learn more about that. Um, I started off with a pretty basic picture and I just it was just too plain so I kept adding and adding and adding to it. The important part here though is that all of the color you see was made from homemade ink from flowers around the yard. Don't let not having art supplies be an excuse. Go out there and make some art.